Today I fucked up by chemically burning my penis. So for the last few months I've, 21M, had balanitis, basically where the penis head gets all red and smelly and it's just not very nice, but as it being COVID-19 times I wasn't very sure if you could see the GP, especially for something minor like this. So deciding that the doctors have no idea what they're talking about, I looked online for different cures, one of them being oregano oil. As most people online just said to get circumcised, I was very excited to do this as it meant I got to keep my foreskin safely on. Now, it says very clearly on the instructions that you must dilute it, it being 4 parts oregano oil and 30 parts olive oil, but like, what do the doctors know? I get my pipette and get ready for the action, just one drop on my head and burning burning burning. I had just put my dick into an oven, and the heat hadn't even started. I ran into the show, slapping the cold water on and dooming myself in the process, the water made the oil drip down to my ball sack and now am I had turn life onto hardcore mode. As I sprayed freezing water onto my bits, they both burned, and no, the water did not help, because now I was freezing but as it was a chemical burn I was also boiling. After standing in the shower for half an hour crying because I had just decided that the devil should give me a blow job, I started noticing something, the foreskin around my dick had started getting swollen and red, omg it's getting too swollen. So not only did it still burn, but now my foreskin is trying to strangle my penis head, with this, I head off to A and E in a bathrobe. I finally get there, the doctor said to me that I needed to roll my foreskin back over my head, after putting some gel on it, it was finally back to normal. Although, everything still burns and my dick now looks like a finger. So if anyone's looking for penis enlargement pills, you know what to use. But seriously, that was a joke. Please don't use oregano oil, even diluted it apparently still burns. The worst part is, I've got no clue if it even got rid of the balanitis. Too long didn't read, put oregano oil on my dick to cure balanitis, instead my dick turned into a volcano and my foreskin decided it was time to assassinate my head. My dick now looks like a finger so if anyone is looking for penis enlargement pills, you know what to do. Pretty sure most dicks are longer and thicker than the dude's fingers. But check out Mr. Big Dick over here. Sorry, I only read the first paragraph. A rashy smelly penis is not something minor. Check out Mr. Clean Penis over here. Never washed his dick with a handful of sand like a real man. Your username checks out. Don't listen to those people, keep your foreskin. It's supposed to be there for multiple reasons. And he's supposed to take advice from fungus taint about hygienic principles? Ed? Today I fucked up by playfully throwing a glass of water to my boyfriend causing him to get 13 stitches. Slash exclamation mark backslash do not watch if you are sensitive to blood. So this happened a few hours ago. And it is probably my biggest fuck up of all times. For context, BF, 21M, and I, 18F, have been together for one year and are staying at his parents' house. We are really playful and competitive, when one starts annoying the other, vengeance always awaits. So during the afternoon we were sitting together, him playing video games and I working on the laptop. Having done nothing more of our day so far, we were deeply bored and started annoying each other like the children we are. It began with small pinches and slaps on the legs but quickly escalated to playing with the water from a glass sitting next to us and him threatening to spill water on my head which he knows I hate. He did not do it, but instead pretended to drink and spat a big jet of water to my face and chest. Surprised and shocked I took a few seconds to realize what happened and missed the opportunity to throw the rest of the water to his face before he ran to hide in the bathroom. We were gonna head out to walk the dogs so he took the time to do his hair in the bathroom while laughing and begging me to not throw the water at him when he opens the door. First mistake, I didn't care and wanted to take revenge over his odd Act. I was then waiting for him, sitting on the stairs on the right side of the door, evaluating what movement of the wrist would be the most efficient to throw the water quickly. Finally opened the door very carefully but closed it as soon as he saw me. I then stood in front of the door, counting on the fact that he would have to go out at one point and after one unsuccessful attempt, he finally fully opens the door. And that's where the fuck up happens. Being given that long awaited opportunity, I don't take the time to evaluate the situation and as fast as possible I give my 
my strongest arm move to throw the water all over him. In my excitement I did not think he would move but turns out he has pretty strong reflexes. He instantly used his arm to protect himself from the water and to block the glass from going further but the combined motions of his arm and mine made it so the glass hit his arm harder than expected. Way too hard. The glass actually broke on the shock and what should have been a sweet victory turned into a nightmare. Seeing the glass on the floor I freeze but only when I hear him screaming I realize what happened. The broken glass had entered deeply in his skin creating a long and deep cut and a smaller one on his left arm. At this point there is blood and broken glass everywhere and I am totally freaked out. Obviously he is too and he screams for his mother to call an ambulance. We are running downstairs and the mother starts panicking. They then decide to go to the nearby hospital by cart again sometime regarding how much blood he was losing. I hand him a towel to press against the wound and they run to the car in the most stressful mess I have ever experienced. The two dogs, excited by the screamings, started a zoomie in the middle of the blood and rushed outside to follow their beloved family to the car. I then managed to pick them up and bring them back inside while BF and his mom are leaving the house. And there I am, alone in the middle of a bloody mess with two excited dogs. I am freaked out, I am shocked and I feel so guilty. I then proceed to clean up all the blood and broken glass, eventually noticing that I myself have a small cut on the bottom of my foot which is covered in blood that I am spreading everywhere in the house. No big deal I just use something to stop the blood and clean up everything. The time passes and I have no way to contact them. They ended up coming back two hours later, luckily somebody took care of him immediately and he got four stitches on the small cut and nine on and inside of the big one. The cut was pretty deep and he recorded a video of his muscle moving through the inside of his arm. Lesson learned, I will never play with glass anymore. Too long didn't read, today I fucked up by throwing water from a glass to my boyfriend which he stopped with his arm causing it to break and enter his flesh leaving him with two wounds requiring four and nine stitches. Top prank. Clearly had your boyfriend in stitches. At least he could film his arm so he should be fine. Thanks for this great today I fucked up story and a great view in the human body. The doctor actually filmed for him when he was under anesthesia, but he is okay, just really in pain. Thank you for reading smile. Now your first issue was deciding to throw a glass at someone playfully, like what lol. My point was to only throw the water from the glass and keeping the glass itself in my hand, I didn't evaluate the possibility that he could try to block it and tbh I would not have thought that it could break so easily, but I agree it was stupid and irresponsible. My jaw dropped lmfao. I am glad y'all are okay? I think? Oh, oh, yes we are okay luckily. He will go back for a checkup in two days. Thanks for your concern smile. That video is gnarly. Today I fucked up by trying to run out of my in-laws house naked to hide my food poisoning. So this happened a long time ago, but I will never live this night down. Today I consider my in-laws the parents I never had, and it honestly warms my heart they call me their child. The first time I met my boyfriend's parents we had already been dating for around a year. They lived across the state and as two broke college kids obviously we weren't taking trips often but all spoke on the phone frequently, so every Everyone was very excited to finally meet. The first couple hours of our trip went great, so we decided to go to a local Mexican restaurant that his dad really liked. When we get there, his mom just orders a small plate of Spanish rice. She says she wasn't a huge fan of this restaurant and she mentioned being on a diet so it didn't seem weird to me when I ordered my decked out chicken quesadilla. Everything was going great until the food got there. And that's when my night took a nasty tumble downhill and straight into a giant vat of shit. Literally, my quesadilla took up my whole plate, and was covered in this cheese sauce. Also the only thing I ate that wasn't a part of someone else's dish, that made it practically fall apart. It kinda looked gross, but that was the greasiest, most disgusting quesadilla I have ever had the pleasure of eating. It was absolutely glorious but I'm not at all surprised it made me sick. I didn't finish it, but my stomach was hurting before we left to go back to his parents house. I have a lot of stomach issues, and chronic constipation has been something I've dealt with for a long time. On this particular day, it had been about 3 days since I had last went so I was all kinds of backed up, 
I didn't think anything of the stomach cramps I was getting because it was pretty normal after eating. We decide to stay for a football game and about 20 minutes after it started my stomach cramps got worse. I could barely sit on the couch without fidgeting and my stomach was making the most unholy noises I've ever heard, and I was not the only one hearing them. After a few minutes the pain got to be unbearable, so I quietly excused myself to the bathroom and prayed there was some air freshener and a fan in their bathroom. As soon as I closed the bathroom door I began projective vomiting all over their newly renovated bathroom. There was no warning and no time to aim. I tried stumbling to the toilet through halfway digested quesadilla before puking all over the toilet too. It came out with so much force what didn't make it into the toilet got plastered in the corner of the room, aka one of the hardest places to clean off. Ooh but that wasn't the worst. Once I finally squatted and got my head positioned just right so I wasn't splattering the room with vomit I heaved with so much force I shit myself. There was no stopping it and my tiny ass thong for the first time in my life was doing my body no favors. My jeans were so tight I managed to shit upwards and ruined my shirt too. So this all took only about 30 seconds, but I felt like I was dying and the stench was so vile it made me dry heave. This was the only time I've ever had food poisoning in my life and I wasn't prepared at all for it. Once I managed to stop leaking bodily fluids I cleaned everything up with two whole roll of toilet paper, but I still had the problem of my poopy drawers. We had a suitcase in the car, so I thought I'll just go grab an extra pair of clothes and wait in the car and text my boyfriend and tell him we needed to leave ASAP. They don't have any neighbors for half a mile so I thought my plan was genius and the only way I could get out of this situation without embarrassing myself. After spraying probably half the Febreze bottle I tied my jacket around my waist and put my ruined jeans and pants in a trash bag along with the toilet paper I'd used and made a mad dash naked from the waist down from the bathroom to outside. You can't see the front door and bathroom I used from the living room so I thought I was in the clear. I made it to the car without a problem, and stripped as quickly as I could and changed clothes. I later learned I was very wrong. We had to drive back home that night, and had to make frequent abrupt stops so I could puke or use the bathroom. An hour into our trip, my boyfriend gets a phone call from his parents. What I didn't know at the time was his parents have a bunch of motion sensor camera around the outside of their house. So they had several angles of me running around their house naked and stripping in broad daylight. We didn't have to tell them about my incident until then, and they felt horrible about it but admitted after hearing the story seeing me make a mad dash to the car with my junk hanging out was hilarious. We joke about it a lot now, but I'm never taking restaurant recommendations from them again. Too long didn't read, the first time meeting my in-laws I got food poisoning and puked all over their new bathroom, then got busted via security camera running around naked from the waist down. Edit for spelling. Apparently controlling my bowels isn't the only thing I have trouble with lol. This was amazing and I'm glad you shared it I had a good laugh. What a shitty situation. What a ride. What he said above, I appreciate realizing I'm not the only person that messes up. Bravo. As someone who frequently gets stomach issues I feel for you. I'm very impressed that you managed to clean everything up with toilet paper alone. I threw up in the back of a 1968 Ford Mustang on our first date. It was mortifying. Dot.